Hello, I'm Forrest Witt, a senior application engineer with Electro Industries Gauge Tech. In this video, I will demonstrate how easy it is to configure the I.O. cards in one of our Shark 200 meters. When we look at the back of the Shark 200, we can see two I.O. card slots. We can choose from a variety of I.O. cards that can be used to expand communication capabilities, provide control functions, and various digital and analog outputs. Let's briefly look at the I.O. cards that are available and describe what they can accomplish. The first card has two relay outputs and two status inputs. We can drive the relay outputs with limit conditions we set in the profile for the Shark 200. For example, we could monitor power factor and trip a relay to switch in a capacitive load bank when the power factor reaches a predetermined value. We can use the status inputs to check the state of an external device. Our next two cards are used to provide an analog output current ramp based on readings or calculated values. One card has four 0 to 1 milliamp outputs and the other provides four 4 to 20 milliamp outputs. These ramps can be driven by selectable parameters like current, voltage, K-bar, and power, as well as pretty much any measured or calculated value that varies in a linear way. You can also choose bidirectional settings for values such as K-bar that can have both positive and negative values. The next card is a four-channel pulse output and four-channel digital input card. This card can be used to send pulses like defined value KYZ pulses to another device or can be used to collect KYZ pulses from something like a water, steam, or gas meter. The final two cards are used for communication. The first is a fiber optic card which mimics RS-485 communication but has the advantage that you will be able to use fiber for the cable run between devices. Finally, we have our Ethernet card, which allows you to use TCP IP to interrogate and program the meter. This card also has a web server function, which allows you to see status and readings for the meter using any web browser. So now that we have looked at the different cards available, let's look at how easy it is to program these cards. I will go over two quick examples. First, we connect to the Shark 200 using Communicator EXT. We have gone over this step in detail in one of our other videos. For our first example, we will reset the IP address on our Ethernet card. We choose the connect icon, select a network connection. The default IP for the Shark 200 is 10.0.0.2. So, we enter that and use the default port 502. Then we press connect. Now that we are connected, let's open the profile window for the meter. We click OK on the status window and then choose the profile icon. When the profile window opens up, we will see our I.O. cards at the bottom of the directory tree. For this meter, we can see that we have two I.O. cards inserted in the meter. Option card 1 is listed as a network card, so let's choose the network card and we see that the first tab is for IP address and DNS. Choose that and we see the address and DNS window. Let's change the IP address to 10.0.0.99. We simply type that address into the IP address window. Then we click on update device. The software will prompt us to be certain we want to change these settings. The meter will load the new settings from the profile template and then go through a reboot of the meter. Now, we have lost our connection to the meter with our software because the IP has changed. So, we go back to the connect window, enter the new IP address, 10.0.0.99, press connect, and we are back connected to the meter. Remember, since I am direct connected to the meter without a router in between, I need to set a fixed IP close to that of the meter in control panel for my TCP IP port. Back to the profile and we will configure the other I.O. card. Our other I.O. card is a 4 to 20 milliamp output card. After we connect to the meter and go into profile, notice that the I.O. card slot 2 shows the analog I.O. and the 4 to 20 milliamp output. So let's select that. These cards are intuitive to program. 
we first select the value we want to base the 4 to 20 milliamp ramp on. VAR total is an interesting value. We will enter minus 2000 for the low end and 2000 for the high end. 12 milliamps is the middle of the range. Since VAR can be both negative or positive, we will see 12 milliamps at zero and the high and low end values at the corresponding values of 4 milliamps and 20 milliamps. That's all there is to it. This concludes our demonstration of how simple it is to configure I.O. cards in our Shark 200 series of meters. The Shark 200 is an incredibly powerful instrument with many applications, but it's very easy to program and use. Please contact me or our customer engineering team for full details on the features, capabilities, and benefits of these products.